Spotlight is a production of CTNY, the Catholic television network of Youngstown. It seeks to spotlight people, places, and events from around the Diocese of Youngstown that promote the new gospel of joy called for by Pope Francis. Your program host is Father James Corda. Hello and welcome to Spotlight. I'm Father Jim Corda. Today we're going to talk about the city of Youngstown. And joining me is Mayor John McNally. Welcome to our show. Good morning, Father. Thank you. You know, I think it would be good for the folks uh, that are with us uh, who may not know you personally to get to know you a little bit better. So if you'd like to share something about yourself, uh, where you're from, uh, where you went to school, and your kind of early days. Okay. Uh, pretty much a, a product of the north side of Youngstown, Liberty Township. I went to uh, St. Ed's grade school and junior high school. Graduated in, from Ursuline in 1987. Uh, went away to college to Georgetown University. Mm -hmm. Graduated from there in 1991 and then uh, graduated from law school at Cleveland State where I got a law degree and a master's in public administration mm -hmm. in 1996. My first job was down in Columbus for about 18 months working for the state of Ohio and uh, moved back to Youngstown in 1998 and got engaged to my uh, high school sweetheart uh, who was a North Sider. And, um, been uh, either involved in, in politics or just being a lawyer since then. Uh, we have two daughters, Kara and Casey, who uh, will be, uh, what, a freshman at Ursuline coming up later on this year, and then uh, Casey, a sixth grader at St. Christine's. Very good. You know, I know your dad's a, a lawyer, uh -huh. and uh, is that something that you always wanted to do, or is that because of his uh, I think it was probably just following in his footsteps a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, I never, I think as I got older, I never wanted to be a lawyer all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I really did have an interest in municipal law and municipal sure. government and getting my law degree and then my master's in public administration mm -hmm. were sort of a nice way to combine both of my interests. Sure. Um, and, and so that's worked out over the long term. Yeah, let's talk, uh, you know, normally on uh, this type of show and on this type of network, we don't talk about politics. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna talk about it in kind of a generic way sure. if we could. Uh, when we do talk about politics, what would be some of the things that, that us kind of uh, ordinary people should keep in mind when we think about politics and talk about it? Well, I think the, uh, for some of us who are in politics, it really does become a sport sometimes. Sure. And, um, you know, I think we all sometimes try to tamp that down mm -hmm. a little bit. Uh, for me, politics and my interest in, in city government is really um, helping people at sort of the everyday level. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm really not interested politically in things above me, mm -hmm. but being able to pick up the phone and help somebody with a problem that they have in the city sure. on a daily basis, that public service end of, end mm -hmm. of things I think is important to me. And I think that is something that I learned uh, when I was growing up from my parents sure. and, and parents at St. Ed's, mm -hmm. people who volunteered all the time and, and right. as a parishioner at St. Christine's with kids there now. Mm -hmm. I see that happening as well. And I think the giving back portion of it is uh, not only as a parent, but then as a politician is really what I'm interested in doing. Sure, well, you know, that whole idea of, of giving back and getting involved in the community is, is something that, that is your avocation, but I think it's also something that we should all be encouraged to do. What would be some things that you would encourage the folks that are with us to do more about their local communities? I would say getting involved with a neighborhood group, mm -hmm. um, getting involved with an organization uh, on your side of town that uh, maybe helps clean up the streets. Or mm -hmm. you know, even something as simple as cutting your neighbor's grass. If, or if you have no neighbor, but you have an empty lot and you want to, right. cutting that grass, that, we've become a grass cutter for an entire city. Mm -hmm. And so I encourage people to cut as much grass as they can in the summertime. Yeah. Um, but, you know, your neighborhood organizations, mm -hmm. something at your church, um, there's, there's thousands of actually of volunteer opportunities across mm -hmm. the city of Youngstown and the Mahoning Valley. Um, becoming a volunteer in some way or another yeah. gives back to your community. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I truly think that it's not a huge commitment, but mm -hmm. an hour a week. I mean, for example, if you want to help in the Youngstown City Schools, they have a reading program where if you devote either an hour a week or even an hour a month to go at lunchtime sure. to read with the elementary school mm -hmm. students, um, they have a program in place and they've actually seen the increases in, in reading scores for their students 
who have sort of a dedicated mentor or tutor to come mm -hmm. read with them. Something as simple as that um, will help your community tremendously. You know, the city has changed, and most cities change mm -hmm. over the years. Yeah. Uh, you're from the north side, I'm from the east side of Youngstown, and I remember kind of the city in its heydays, uh, steel mills going and mm -hmm. all of that. How have you seen the city change first uh, for the not so good, but then for the better? Well, I, uh, you talk about the steel mills going, and, and one story I tell frequently is I think I was uh, about eight years old, it would have been 1977. And around Christmas time, my parents told me, look, you know, some of your friends may not have a great Christmas this year because their uh, father lost their job at a steel mill or expects to. Mm -hmm. um, it, and I do remember the days of steel mills and the flames blowing in the yeah. air. But that's really something early on that I always remember. Mm -hmm. um, and I've watched over time, especially since 1998 when I moved back to Youngstown, mm -hmm. um, you know, the continued loss in population. Right. We're, we're hoping it's really sort of leveled off at this mm -hmm. point in time. Um, but I can remember being in high school at Ursuline and going along to a lot of these neighborhoods where you had a lot of houses and you right. still had a lot of people and a lot sure. of families. Uh, mm -hmm. Now in some areas of our city we don't have that. And yeah. one thing I, if, if I'm speaking to a group downtown or if I'm talking to a group in general, when you leave downtown I encourage people, say, you know, go to where you grew up at. Peel off right. Market Street, South Avenue, mm -hmm. Belmont Avenue, Fifth, and go down the streets that you grew up on and see what's yeah. there now. Mm -hmm. And when we tell people some of the struggles in government that we have every day to sure. help make our neighborhoods safer and cleaner, mm -hmm. I want folks to understand that. And especially, I'd say, on the south side, um, people, and on the east side, people mm -hmm. really notice what I'm talking about when I say right. peel off, check it out, and, and understand that we really have some challenges uh, in the city. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because on occasion, I go out to the villa, and to go yeah. to the villa in Pennsylvania, I need to go, or I can go by my old home on Oak Street Extension. Mm -hmm. And uh, the area pretty much is kind of the same as I remember it, uh, because when you get out to like Coitsville and then into uh, Pennsylvania, it's pretty much the same. But as you drive through the city, uh, my, my grandparents' home is gone, um, the neighbors are gone, you know, so these, these kind of situations bring back memories, but they're usually good memories. Uh -huh. And so I think there's something about, as you had mentioned, going back to your roots and to see what's there and to see what used to be there really kind of helps you, I think, understand where you're from and where you came from. And that should help you in what you're doing today. And usually when you're thinking about that, if you're thinking about the good things, you're thinking about <clears throat> your friends, your family, the fact that you could run loose pretty much all day long. Sure. And, and that's great, and I still think mm -hmm. that's the appeal of Youngstown to many people, even right. those who have left, is that mm -hmm. family atmosphere that we still have in Youngstown and the, in the entire valley, I think. Uh, but it all started on some of those um, smaller streets that were just lined with home after home, mm -hmm. with parents after parents, and, and just you know kids running loose all sure. day long, and everybody kept an eye on one another. Right. We're going to talk more about that in a moment, Mayor, but we're going to take a quick break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I am Marino. Je suis Marino. I am Marino. I believe that we are all connected to each other, and that it is the gift of compassion that unites us and makes us one. It doesn't matter what language, culture, or tradition we come from. We can share compassion wherever we are. Mary Knoll, an American Catholic organization of priests and brothers, has been reaching out to those in need for nearly 100 years in 26 countries throughout the world. Mary Knoll dedicates 86 cents of every dollar donated to their programs, and with your help, they can do more. Missioners, workers, volunteers, supporters, we are all Mary Knoll. I am Mary Knoll. Yo soy Mary Knoll. I'm Father Mike. And I am Mary Knoll. 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 We are in our seventh year, Cristo Rey Jesuit High School. One of the things that's unique about this school is that our kids work five days a month at offices in downtown Chicago to pay for their education. We got telephone calls the first day thanking us for sending us those kids to their companies. 95% of our kids are the first ones in their families to finish high school, and 87% of our graduates are in college right now. No one believed that it would be as successful as it is. Well, it's obviously caught on, and we're very, very excited about it. Welcome back to our show. 
I'm talking with Mayor John McNally. And uh, before we took a break, we were talking about going back to neighborhoods and talking about neighbors. And probably one of the uh, best neighbors of the city would be like YSU or the hospital. Let's talk a little bit about the relationship between the university and the city. The university relationship and the city relationship is a very positive one over the past couple of years uh, since I became mayor and then with President Tressel coming to the university. I think it's really been strengthened. Um, obviously, if, if you're up around the university campus, mm -hmm. you see the Lincoln Avenue project, which has been completed, right. and the Wick Avenue project, which will be done very soon. Mm -hmm. um, we have a great understanding of, uh, I think, of how the city and the university have to interact. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in the past, that hasn't always been the case, but we are convinced that um, having the university being really a physical part of the mm -hmm. city uh, mm -hmm. is important to the entire community. We have three or four apartment buildings downtown that are filled up with mm -hmm. um, teachers and students right. and, and folks who attend classes mm -hmm. at YSU. Uh, the Stambaugh Hotel project, which will be done uh, hopefully very soon, mm -hmm. um, will be you know something the university, I think, will be using frequently. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a great relationship with the president and some of their staff folks on, on the campus. So we just see that continuing to improve um, over time. Even small things like uh, the uh, street signs up around the university campus mm -hmm. are red and white with, sure. uh, with the logo. Mm -hmm. And that was something that the university came to us, say, hey, are you guys comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. and, and we gave our permission sure. and our, our traffic and signal folks helped put them up. Mm -hmm. But even something like that, that's a small quality of life right. issue between a, a campus and between a city. And uh, we're, we're very happy that, uh, mm -hmm. A, the President Trestle's there, but that the university continues to grow. And it's an extremely important part of the city of Youngstown. Well, we uh, certainly love uh, President Trestle. He's been on our show and, and the wonderful things that he's been doing for the university. And I think with you, with the city, I think is just very commendable. Yep. And we want to certainly continue and promote something like that. When we talk, uh, you know, in the beginning, I talked about politics. And let's talk about religion and politics. Uh -huh. Those don't usually always mix. But for better or for worse, sometimes they have to. So in, in your um, position, and you come in contact with people of faith or religious people, those who have something to do with uh, concerns, uh -huh. how do you address that? Well, I try to, I, I do try to address it from an understanding of, of my own faith. Sure. Uh, I think I've become honestly more religious um, since I did a men's renewal program at St. Mm -hmm. Christine's mm -hmm. probably 11 years ago now. Mm -hmm. uh, I probably attend church more often and participate sure. more. Um, you know, I'm very interested in the issues about immigration and, and mm -hmm. refugee mm -hmm. resettlement. And we've talked about that over the past year. And some folks have criticized me for trying to support that mm -hmm. effort. Um, but I meet people of all faiths all the time. Mm -hmm. um, we're involved with the Islamic community, obviously involved with the Catholic community. Sure. Uh, I know folks from the evangelical faiths mm -hmm. um, and, and talk to them frequently as well about what's going on, the folks in the Baptist community and the, mm -hmm. you know, the traditional African-American churches. It's a big part of being mayor, mm -hmm. being involved in the community, sure. working with the faith-based groups to help promote the city of Youngstown. Um, you know, the uh, traditional African-American churches and their role with the youth and our police department and how our mm -hmm. police department interacts in neighborhoods. Uh, when we've had some bad incidents, the first groups we've reached out to has been mm -hmm. the traditional African-American sure. churches and the pastors for mm -hmm. assistance. And I think that that's a reason over the past three and a half years or so that things have been relatively mm -hmm. calm in Youngstown mm -hmm. while in other areas not so calm. Sure. Um, but in terms of my own Catholic faith, I, I do think it drives some of the decisions I support, mm -hmm. some of the things I'm thinking about. Um, we're getting more involved in the issue of infant mortality and infant health, mm -hmm. uh, with, which I think is important. And we're working with mm -hmm. our city health district and Mercy Health System on those types of issues. We're working with the churches as well. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the, the refugee issue is something I think mm -hmm. comes from um, the way I see uh, the Pope acting. And I think he's... Uh, uh, He's something I want, somebody I want to emulate, and I pay mm -hmm. attention to what to what he's supporting. 
Um, but it, it does come up mentally. It doesn't, I don't sure. think it leads to decisions, right. and I don't think it should as, as mayor. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's something I don't think you can really ignore either. Sure. Well, when it's part of you, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of uh, something that, that doesn't drive you, but it, it, it kind of gives you a sense of priorities and what's yeah. important. And I think that gets back to, we talked earlier about the giving back to your community. Right. And, and as I said, I remember seeing my parents at St. Ed's, and, and I see other friends sure. at St. Christine's, I see the other church-based schools, people giving back, and, and mm -hmm. that's, uh, I guess my Catholicism is probably a little bit more on the social justice end sure. of the spectrum than, than mm -hmm. anything, but I, I do think that you want to have a great community, mm -hmm. you, you need to be participating in that community. Mm -hmm. And I would think that you would agree that that should be something that should drive all of us, you know, that sense of, reaching out to the community, that sense of being aware of, of issues that yeah. affect us, that, that we can be part of the solution and not necessarily part of the problem. Yeah, I, I tell people, look, if you're coming to City Hall for all the solutions uh, and all the answers, you know, it's gonna be a, a, a short visit to City right. Hall. Uh, we need more, par more people to participate mm -hmm. for, I think, the common, common good of our community. And whether that's based on you love Youngstown or it's part of your faith, mm -hmm. we'll take it however mm -hmm. we can get it, but to, to continue to try to improve the city, we need more people giving back mm -hmm. to the community on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. We've got only about a minute left in okay. our middle segment. What would be one issue that you would really like us to think about and to pray about and to consider as something that we need to do as a city? As a city, um, I, the refugee issue, I think, is one issue that we um, should be looking to participate in. Um, not in the numbers of thousands of people, mm -hmm. but in the number of families that were willing and, and ready to accommodate and assist. Uh, I think that's something as a, a community we should be welcoming to do. Mm -hmm. um, there are legal programs where vetting and people have right. been cleared through 27 different steps. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's important to be part of a larger global problem, and it is a problem across the globe. A lot of people are scared of that issue, and so I think they need to reflect on that and, and hopefully um, become less fearful. We'll talk more in a moment. Stay with us. We'll be right back. There is a place where a total stranger will give you their blood. A place where someone you never knew will save your child from drowning. Where a person who doesn't look like you, talk like you, or dress like you will give you shelter after a flood. That place is called America, where we look out for each other. When you help the American Red Cross, you help America. What have you done for your marriage today? I gave my wife a hug this morning. I thought I'd, I love her. Instead of sitting on the couch, I helped clean up. I cooked my husband's uh, favorite breakfast. I sent my husband a love email. What have I done for my marriage today? Good question. I gave her a call and say, thinking of her and the kids. I uh, did her hair this morning. I think it looks pretty good. <laughs> We're going to the museum as a family. What have I done for my marriage today? I made my wife coffee and breakfast this morning. It's going to be her birthday next week, so I've been spending time today making arrangements to make that extra special. Oh, we're spending the day together. I bought her an orchid. <laughs> Hassan was able to let me sleep in by taking him care of him in the morning. I read the newspaper to my wife, and it cracked her up. She's been, she's still laughing. <laughs> what have you done for your marriage today? Small changes can make a world of difference. Get started at foryourmarriage.org. A message from the Catholic Church. Welcome back to Spotlight. I'm talking with Mayor John McNally about the city of Youngstown. You know, Mayor, we uh, ended by talking about some of the issues that, that really affect our city and probably cities around the country. Mm -hmm. What are some inter really international stuff that affect us? And is it is it proper to say that things that happen internationally do affect cities here in the United States? Well, I'm not really sure if there's a lot of international things that affect us tremendously. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of, well, I guess I would say, you know, the, the continued um, fights that the U.S. military has in other parts of, sure. of the planet mm -hmm. uh, will affect us. They, they affect us, I think, in, in budgets that federal governments propose. Mm -hmm. 
they affect us in areas um, if you're devoting more to, to military efforts there's less on the community development side mm -hmm. um, that's that's probably something we're dealing with right now in terms of mm -hmm. making sure that the federal government continues to support c cities across the country right. um, I was at the US Conference of Mayors earlier this year and, and um, Vice President Pence said that the, you know, the administration would be helping cities uh, in a big way. Mm -hmm. um, that remains to be seen whether that's actually sure. going to ever occur. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, one of the things I try to tell people sometimes is we really have to help ourselves. And that's, mm -hmm. I think, that call to volunteer, right. that call to cut your neighbor's grass, that mm -hmm. call to help out in your church. Um, even though we may not have all the money in the world here in Youngstown and in City mm -hmm. Hall, I think we do a very good job as a community supporting one another, sure. and uh, that needs to continue. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you know one other area that affects us um, and, and money that we raise as a city is the oil and gas industry sure. with Valorac mm -hmm. <clears throat> down at Briar Hill mm -hmm. and a couple other smaller companies that over the past couple years have really had to either shutter or right. cut down operations significantly. That's cost us significant dollars on the income tax generation. Mm -hmm. Income taxes in Youngstown are how we support our police department, right. our fire department, our street department, mm -hmm. the resurfacing of roadways, you know, the traditional right. infrastructure needs. Right. Um, as mayor, I try to focus on what city government is supposed to be mm -hmm. doing. And if we do what we're supposed to be doing, the safety forces, the street department, operations of the administrative functions of government, then I think we're doing a good job. And, and we try not, if we stray out too far, we probably don't have the money to support that. Sure. But, um, you know, those are a couple international issues that affect how we operate on a daily basis. Let's tell the folks that are with us uh, what you do in a typical day. Okay. You know, sometimes people get a sense that maybe you spend all day behind a desk or this or that. Let's tell the folks that are with us what you experience in a particular well, usually I try to I try to get down to City Hall uh, probably about eight or eight fifteen. I drop my daughters off at school and then get down there. Um, probably get on the computer, do a few things there. But I spend most of my day either in meetings or returning mm -hmm. phone calls to mm -hmm. either staff or members of the public. Uh, I try not to be behind the desk all the time. If when I do that, I notice I start to get a belly. First off, but <laughs> um, being out in the community mm -hmm. and, and seeing what is needs to be fixed or what has to be fixed is important. Mm -hmm. So I do spend, I try to spend some time driving around certain areas mm -hmm. uh, to check on the progress of things. Uh, inevitably, you're gonna have block watch groups or neighborhood group right. meetings um, in the evening. Um, you know, you get invited to dinners, you know, give a couple remarks mm -hmm. at this event mm -hmm. or that event, uh, and that's important to do, yeah. and um, I, I enjoy doing that. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, with, with smartphones, uh, you're never too far away from sure. the office anymore. And so mm -hmm. whether it's the phone calls, text messages, emails, um, the social media aspect mm -hmm. of things, um, you're never disconnected from, right. from things. Um, but uh, I've noticed at times I get too comfortable behind the desk, mm -hmm. and that's when I say, you know what, you need to go out and check out this neighborhood, sure. check on the status of de demolition efforts. Mm -hmm. Uh, if it's in the summertime, where's the high grass growing that we have to sure. cut? Uh, what roads need to be resurfaced? Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I'll go out with my police chief and we might just drive around for a little bit, check mm -hmm. out some hot spots. And then sometimes I just do that on my own. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you're never finished being mayor. Right. It, it truly is a 24 hour day, seven day a week job. I certainly sleep, sure. but um, you know, you, you never know when you're gonna get a call from the police chief in the middle of the night. Right about something that's gone wrong or your water mm -hmm. department mm -hmm. or anybody. Um, and that's just part of the job. Yeah, you know, one of the areas that, that I think is so crucial in public life is communicating mm -hmm. uh, and, and being a good communicator. And I think uh, those of us who are in the field of communication understand the importance of that. Why is communicating honestly and openly important, but why is just that whole idea of communicating with other people just so, so <clears throat> important? Uh, former Mayor McKelvey, who I worked for when I first came back to Youngstown in, in the city, said that um, people can take a yes answer or a no answer, but they can't take no answer at all. Sure. And um, <clears throat> so I try to be as vigilant as I can in, in getting back to people and communicating mm -hmm. to them. Um, even whether it's a phone call, whether it's an email, whether it's a tweet, people want to feel connected to their government. And they want sure. to be able to say, yeah, I called the mayor and he's going to help me out on this issue, but mm -hmm. or he can't help me on this and here's why. 
people usually don't mind a no answer if they right. understand exactly. it. Um, mm -hmm. Or if I can't help them, if I can push them in the right direction, mm -hmm. whether it's in City Hall or another government or into the private sector, mm -hmm. they're fine with that. They're just, they're really just looking for help. And um, mm -hmm. that in a, in a smaller town like Youngstown, now mm -hmm. it's 65,000 people. Um, that's what people are looking for. I mean, it was probably a little bit different when Youngstown was 160,000 sure. people. A mayor couldn't take mm -hmm. on all these issues by himself now. Yeah. But there's a lot of things that my staff will forward to me. And, mm -hmm. and if I know who can, you know, I might forward the email to somebody mm -hmm. else at a different office or mm -hmm. a different entity. And it, it's much, just, it's just so easy to communicate. Right. You're, you're almost negligent if you don't mm -hmm. communicate like that anymore. In our last uh, few minutes, Mayor, tell us what your hopes are for, for us in this community and for our neighborhoods. Well, I think uh, one of the, the first hopes is, is to continue to clean the city up. Uh, I think at times our city it can look ugly. And so we, that's why we're devoting so much energy to the demolition programs. Um, you know, the first three years when I was in office, we took down 1,100 homes and commercial structures. Mm -hmm. Um, this year we intend to take down about 520 just in, the, just in one year. Mm -hmm. So we're pushing that hard. Um, we try to clean up our streets mm -hmm. and um, resurface them. I think to feel proud about your city, you need to feel proud, be proud about the way it looks. Right. And uh, when we talked earlier about getting back into those neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. um, that's one reason why I want people to do that, to, to remember what it was and, remember what it, and then hope to what it can be in the future. Uh, I think another thing we need to hope for is that our population loss sort of settles in. Mm -hmm. uh, people say, Mayor, what are you going to do to uh, increase the population in the city of Youngstown? And I say, look, I've got to stop people from leaving first right. before I can worry about how I'm going to increase it. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we're hopeful that um, the population losses has really started to, to stem down. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're, we're always trying to figure out a way to bring new employment to the area. Mm -hmm. uh, to bring new employers into the area, we have to have an education system right. that is functioning better than it has in maybe the past 20, 25 mm -hmm. years. So pray for uh, you know, Mr. Mohip and folks right. at the Youngstown City School District and hope that more parents will get involved, more family members will get involved in the education of, of their young family members. Um, mm -hmm. And that's where, again, that volunteering back into schools is, uh, to me, almost should be a requirement to folks. Mm -hmm. If you want your community to be better, help participate in all of our grade schools. Mm -hmm. I think you probably Catholic mm -hmm. or charter or, exactly. or just the public schools, get involved in a young person's mm -hmm. academic life. That will certainly help things up as well. Well, Mayor John McNally, Thank you so much thank for being with us. Thank you for the invite, Father. I appreciate you're it. You're welcome, and thank you for your public service. Thank we you. Certainly I appreciate, appreciate it. that. Thank you, and thank you for being with us. Have a good day, and God be with you. Spotlight has been a production of CTNY, the Catholic Television Network of Youngstown. Your program host was Father James Corda. By the time we can walk, each of us yearns for the joy that comes from being able to do for ourselves. Church World Service believes that being self-reliant is a joy everyone should share. So around the block or around the world, share the joy. Church World Service.